Wineabbers. My name is Jesse Meekham, and this is podcast number 44 for You Need a Budget, where we teach you four rules to help you stop living paycheck to paycheck, get out of debt, and save more money. Today, we interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you part of the Life Aware movement. You can catch it on Twitter at hashtag Life Aware, or you can check it out at goodfinancialsense.com. I interview today Jeff Rose. He's a certified financial planner and the founder of goodfinancialsets.com, also the originator of the life insurance movement. And I want to cut right to that. We're going to talk life insurance, why it's important, why you need it, why at the end of this podcast you should be hopping online and getting going with it if you don't have it. Without further ado, here's my interview. All right. I am here with Jeff Rose. He's a certified financial planner and he is uh, the blogger, the guy that runs goodfinancialsense.com. He's based out of Illinois and he is a man that moves things. He started a movement that I want to talk about today that is all about life insurance. So welcome to the podcast, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Uh, so give me a quick rundown and all these uh, wine abbers. We, we love to budget and we love to allocate money to things. And I want you to tell us that we should allocate money to one more thing, and that's this life insurance movement. So kind of give me the skinny on that. Sure. You know, just to kind of give some background, I actually had done another movement back in March, and that was called the Roth IRA movement. I'm really big on Roth IRAs. I think that's definitely a spot of your budget, you know, saving for your future. And that was something I just I just got this crazy idea. I thought about getting all these bloggers to do it on the same day. And never thought it would take off. Sure enough, after some recruiting and just getting the word out, you know, we had almost 150 different personal finance bloggers come on board. And once that happened, it just really uh, just awakened me to how strong the personal finance blogging community is. So I knew that there would be another movement uh, into play. So that's introduction, introducing the life insurance movement. So uh, you definitely need to have life insurance. It needs to be part of your budget. Uh, I thought you know today we could talk about uh, some of the common mistakes I see with people and when they go to purchase life insurance, uh, that might be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I, um, I, I originally bought my insurance, it was years ago, you know, when I first got married, basically, or I think it was maybe when our first kid was born, but, um, I don't remember it being terribly difficult, but what are some, some things that people need to look out for if they're just, you know, just getting started, aren't insured or anything yet? Sure. And I think what you've explained is the exact same scenario that I went through. Uh, you know, I bought a policy when me and my wife were first married. I bought a second policy after we had our second child. Then we had child number two, child number three, and then we're getting, getting ready to adopt our fourth. So every time, you know, that has happened, it's like it makes me rethink, do I really have enough? Because, you know, right now I am the bread uh, winner of the family. My wife is a you know stay at home mom and a blogger. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if something happens to me. Uh, you know, I want I don't want her to have to go back to work, and try to figure out to send, you know, four kids to daycare and mm-hmm. and how she's going to pay for school. So, you know, we've generally kept increasing, you know, the amount of life insurance that I have on myself. You know, so I sell when I tell people I have, you know, two and a half million dollars of term coverage. You know, most people are like, oh, my gosh, that seems like a lot. Right. But, you know, the fact my wife's 30, you know, I mean, she's going to be around a, a while. You know, something happened to me uh, here recently if something did happen to me. So I just want to make sure that she's taken care of. I don't want her to have to stress out about trying to figure out to pay off the house, you know, and just not have to go back to work and all that stuff I just talked about. So, yeah, absolutely. you know, I think I think that's the one thing is that people, you know, one mistake is they get a policy and they think it's enough. But, you know, as life brings on new challenges. Maybe you have a bigger house, maybe you have more debt, maybe you've added kids to the picture. You need to revisit and like, is that $250,000 policy you took out five years ago still going to be enough to cover what your family needs? Absolutely. Yeah. Things change a lot more often than we think they do. Um, what do you, how do you figure out how much is, uh, is important? Is there any kind of formula you walk your clients through or how does that yeah, work? You know, there are some really nice calculators that are out there. I mean, if you're one of these calcula- calculator-minded type individuals, you know, Bankrate has them. I've got a few on my site that, you know, takes a look at your debt, takes a look at the income that you're trying to replace, you know, trying to attach some type of growth rate. You know, if you're a financially analytically minded person, you're probably drooling over this. Mm-hmm. If you're not, you're like completely turned off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I know there's a different uh, types of personality types out there. Uh, for those that don't want the calculators, they just want a general rule of thumb. Most people will just take your income that you're trying to replace, multiply that by 10. And that's a good starting point. Uh, but I often tell people, you know, if you're younger and you've maybe you've only been working for, you know, five years, maybe 10 years, and you're planning on getting raises, 
you know, for the course of your career, then maybe you want that multiplier to be higher. So take your income times, say, 15, and that should at least give you the how much life insurance you need. And then obviously you got to work back and figure out with your budget how much you can afford, et cetera, mm-hmm. you know, to see what's going to make sense for you. I see. So you uh, talked about term life insurance, and that seems to be pretty standard uh, standard advice for people get term coverage, avoid anything but term, and they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Is that your standard advice as well? It is. You know, I mean, I see a lot of people that have whole life policies, and I'm not saying the whole life's a bad investment. The only time that I see is a bad investment is whenever I come across, and I'll give you a case in point example, had a young couple, just had a new kid, you know, and they had a $50,000 whole life policy. And that's what, that's all they had. Mm-hmm. And they were paying out, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month, you know, for that policy. And at the end of the day, I mean, something happened to that husband, you know, fifty thousand dollars. I mean, they couldn't even pay off their mortgage. Right, right. You know, so they're selling out, you know, a decent amount a month, and you know, that's all they could afford in their budget. So, you know, if they actually would have went went out and got term policies, which would have been maybe like forty bucks a month, you know, just depending, uh, you know, for a lot more coverage, you know, that would have made a whole lot more sense versus that whole life policy. So. Yeah, generally term life is the way to go. Uh, you know, one thing I always encourage people, you know, a lot of people will take it out through their work, which, you know, is fine. It's good. But often what I tell people is, you know, how long you plan on being at that job? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, once you change jobs, you go to work somewhere else, you know, that life insurance does not transfer with you. Uh, so that's one of the, the pluses of actually taking out a third party policy, you know, with like one of the big carriers is that, you know, if you change your jobs, you know, four, five, six times in your career, you're always going to have that coverage in, in place. Yeah, and there could be situations where uh, as you get older, you know, you're at a job for 10 years and you, you got the policy and you're 25 and then suddenly you're 35 and want to get a policy. Uh, you're just that much older. Your rate would be that much higher versus having locked it in, I guess, when you were younger as you, well. Absolutely, because uh, things come about, you know, I mean, you're in good health today. You know, could, you could develop some type of health condition that, you know, either maybe you can't get coverage or if you do get coverage, it's going to be up the wazoo uh, mm-hmm. to pay for it. I, I've, I've seen it. You know, I've seen that firsthand. So it, it definitely pays to get something in force, you know, locked in. You know, it's just like kind of compared to the locking in a mortgage. You know, who wouldn't want to lock in their, a 30-year mortgage today at, you know, 3.75%? Right. You know, why wouldn't you want to lock in, you know, cheap insurance, you know, without having the risk of having to pay more later on? Yeah. And then hopefully uh, if you play your cards right in the other aspects of the personal finance game, then you you can self-insure at the time where you're, uh, you know, where you're starting to look at expensive term. You could say, well, hey, guess what? You know, the kids are now out of the house and uh, they're they're on their own and they're independent. And, you know, at that point, you might not even need to purchase life insurance again. So you got it. Kind of an interesting thought. Well, thanks so much for uh, for coming on today. So. August 22nd, today, is the life insurance movement, and I'm going to be posting up my uh, article all about life insurance, why it's important, and uh, yeah, big thanks for putting this on and kind of getting the word out. It's it's awesome stuff. Cool, man. I appreciate it. All right. Well, you have a good day, and we'll talk to you later, Jeff. Thanks so much. See you. All right. Until next time, follow YNAM's four rules, and you will win financially. You have not budgeted like this. Go get some life insurance.